Hey everyone, Wayne here. Today we're doing a Let's Play tutorial of at least the first turn of Escape from Hades. I just did an unboxing of this recently. Um, I've been playing it a whole bunch and I wanted to make sure and get a video out there, at least one other video, just kind of show you guys how the game plays and why I consider it a really fun game. Um, again, Escape from Hades, designed by Fred Manzo, produced by Herman Lutman, and it's published by Holland Spiel. All right, let's do a overview to start. Um, I'm gonna take you around, show the different components. This game does have a larger footprint than most Holland Spiel games. So it's gonna be a little harder to have it all on camera, but we're just doing the first turn where there's not quite as much going on. Um, so it'll be a little easier. And what I'll probably do is for the different phases, I'll kind of take us around, maybe zoom in a little bit, just so you guys can get um, a better view of actually what I'm doing at that point as opposed to just the entire board, which you don't need to see the entire time. So, all right, we'll do a quick overview and then we'll dive into the game. All right, I'm not gonna dive into, you know, I'm not gonna read the rule book verbatim, I'm not gonna dive into all the lore, everything like that, but um, just to give you guys an overview of the game is that we are the, there's our ship. The SHL Vittles, um, Solar Hastian League. Um, I'm not gonna, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. I'm not gonna say that, that's a mouthful. So what I'm gonna just say is the Solar League. So that is our ship, the SHL Vittles. Those are our squads. Um, the green units are ours. Um, that card represents the enemy fighters that are in orbit that are attacking our ship. This, These are the two maps. Um, the map on the left, the red one, is the Inferno map. This is the exterior of the Hades. And the bluer map um, is Purgatory. That represents the interior of the ship. Um, the, sh the ship is shaped like a cylinder. Um, so what that means is as you move around, um, the top and bottom, yes, that's a solid wall. Your units have to stop there. But if you see these numbers, say the number eight, follow along, number eight over here, it means it wraps around. So if you take, if you go off the left here, it'll just pop out over here. Imagine it's a big cylinder. It just has to be represented, you know, by a 2D map. Um, our mission is our squads, our units. We will land on Inferno and we will destroy these surface installations. So you can see there's a missile one here. There's a later laser battery. And we'll I'll go into more as we play. Um, we destroy those installations, which allows us to go into that complex. See, there's a letter there, letter K. This one, the letter J, oh, excuse me. So we'll go into the complex there, and then we'll pop out on level purgatory, see at, say, J or K, and then we'll go, and our units will go to the different um, areas here where there's these circle counters. And what we're gonna do, we go to the door, you spend a couple moving points to open it, and then you flip that counter over, and hopefully you find Princess Emily. There's also a loot counter, um, a golden idol, and there may be some other things. Um, for instance, this one is revealed at the beginning, the engine room. That's something that there's two uh, bad creatures that may show up, because um, these are actually randomized at the beginning of the game. So you never know exactly what's gonna show up other than there's always the princess, there's always a golden idol, and there's always the loot. Or actually, it's always a teleporter, excuse me. Um, and those different things, as you uncover them, they're considered, you know, different rooms of Hades. Um, engine room, life support, uh, long range targeting. And if you destroy them, it has different effects on the game. I'm trying to think, let's see. So you go down and try to find her, try to get her back up top to the infernal level. And then you go ahead and you use um, your HQs, they call them, which are these numbered in the top left. They're like leader units, one through, you have four of them. This one's Lieutenant Wilson. It's also doubles as an HQ. And then those units can send people either back up to the Vittles or get them down. You also have some unique units like Professor Dante, who is able to um, do what's called a science action. And then the combat units themselves um, have different actions as well, um, which we'll go into as we play. The average turn is going to be, they're going to start off the Nastians, those are the bad guys. Um, they're going to attack the Vittles in orbit. 
with the fighters and then any surface installations that are not damaged or destroyed will attack the vittles as well and they're going to be attacking the different modules on the ship causing damage causing a damage counter to go lower which indicates that these are mod modules are, excuse me are destroyed after that happens we're going to seed the board with the bad guys the nastians they will appear on these guard towers you can see there's two on each level and there's a little padlock there to show you cannot put your units there they'll spawn there and then they'll start moving and moving around the board and there's only a few there's only you know four at first depending on if you have different elevators in action as uh, surface installations um, there's only four but it's four per turn every turn and they keep spawning and they keep spawning and trust me by the end of the game they will be everywhere on both the inferno and the purgatory levels um, if they have an officer on board it'll act then we do what's called the nasty surprise step which is this deck right here we draw from that and it'll always apply a bunch of negative things that's why it's called the nasty surprise deck then there'll be the ground combat step for the nastians so any of the, their units that have become adjacent to ours will attack and let me show their units quick because we will draw them from a cup just give you an idea what their units are like just like ours only they're going to be yellow there's a guard there's also soldiers there's their leader shock unit movement then the number is just for um, activation purposes all right and then after their phase ends with the ground combat phase for the nastians it moves on to the solar league phase where we get a full action for each one of our units and they have all the different actions and i'll explain them as we play um, after that you go to the vittles phase which the vittles can then do a repair check and then after that you can decide to either move out of system um, or which is represented by this counter here see in system or out of system um, if it's in system it can be attacked by the fighters if it's out of system it can't be attacked by the fighters but then you can't transport units to and from the surface of hades obviously if you're not in this actual system um, if you decide to stay in the system you can do an attack step which you have a 50 caliber quad gun and then a rail gun one and two that you can use um, to attack either the fighters or the surface they then go on to recovery phase and then an end turn phase which is basically check for victory all right i think i've explained everything hopefully give you guys a good quick overview um oh the only thing that i did sh didn't talk about specifically but we'll cover in the game obviously are these cards up here these are the preferred direction indicators um, we randomly determine that at the beginning of each turn and that determines what direction what hex side the nastians are facing which then when they begin their movement then they're obviously all be every turn they're generally going to be moving in different directions so they're not always moving in the exact same way all right let's dive into the game okay a major part that i did not explain are the resolution decks um yes we're going to learn about them as we play but i do want to show you guys ahead of time this game does not use any dice um what you do to determine the results of combat or to um, generate numbers or any number of reasons uh, any sort of resolution you want you actually draw a card from the deck and if you look here so we have our solar league deck and then we have a nasty in deck and what we're doing is um drawing from it and i'll just show you and then we'll we'll do more as we as we actually play the game um there's gonna be modifiers there's gonna be numbers there's gonna be letters on here there's be all kinds of stuff so what we're looking at is we're looking at things like spaceborne attack and defense are there modifiers which in this particular nasty card there are none hades base so land combat right looking at modifiers again attack and defense is it railguns attacking missiles attacking is it a soldier guard or how about their defense shock soldier etc same thing with us um our side we have our spaceborne attack from the vittles you know our rail guns our quad guns um the quad gun i should say the two rail guns and the quad gun defense you know against our shields against any modules hades base attacks hades base defense um, and then there's also you can see the number down there so the number four right here and then up there number two again these are all instead of using dice we're using the cards to um, resolve combat resolve what happens per turn things like that it actually works really well I love rolling dice so at first i was like uh oh no dice 
but the card system works really well in this game. Um, I just want to cover that before we actually dove in. All right, so we're starting the game. Um, sequence of play, I'm going to follow through completely here. The Nasty and Phase, they get to go first, um, is broken up into a few different steps. The first step is the Orbital Combat step. This is where, and I mentioned this before, it's where I talked about the Vittles, the modules be under attack by any fighters, um, and then also any surface installations. I showed you those earlier, those are the red counters. Um, they're seated on those letters, the also known as the complexes. Missiles, lasers, railguns. So, starting off, um, Vittles is in system, which it is, always starts in the game in system here, as you can see. Um, it's gonna be attacked by these fighters. Each fighter is going to attack a different module. We start off with our status marker. Hope you can see that. Um, maybe a little bit not focused on that. That's all right. So the status marker starts status holding, and then the backside is status failing. So right now it's on status holding, and it's on G1, the very beginning. And like I said before, we're resolving with our resolution decks. And so what we're looking at is the first fighter goes and attacks. And it's attacking the module G1. Nastians flip a card over. Spaceborne attack. So obviously we're in space. We're looking for attack. Fighters plus three. So keep that in mind. We have a plus three right now. So they're looking at a plus three. We go ahead. We're going to flip over the Solar League. Spaceborne defense. No modifiers. That's rough. So what that means is the plus three stands. And for each positive number, it's a hit. And so it's going to be a hit to knock it to status failing. And then another hit, because remember we had plus three, to destroy that module, which is then going to move the damage counter, the status uh, counter, over to G2 to, at status holding. Now, the hits do not carry over. So technically there were three hits. Well, only we take the first hit, member damaged it. Second hit destroys it, counter moves over to status holding on G2. The third hit is lost. Um, each fighter is attacking each module, not the ship as a whole. That does allow you in cases like this. I mean, that would have been three direct hits would have caused that much worse. Uh, so it's a little better for you. Trust me, they're going to do enough damage regardless, even if they do miss those extra hits sometimes. So, all right, we just set those aside. Now we're going to look at the second fighter. He's going to go ahead and attack. Same deal. Flip a resolution card over, space point attack, fighter, only a plus one on this card. Solar League flips their card over. Defense, quad would be minus three, which the quad is the uh, 50 cal quad gun. It's not that section, it's all other sections minus two. So plus one, you add minus two, which would create a negative one, which means there's no hits generated. Now. In ground combat, negative numbers are going to hurt the attacker. It's going to cause hits on the attacker. However, in space combat, spaceborne combat, that is not the case. Those extra hits, whatever, are lost. Um, those, quote, hits for the defense, I guess you could say, are lost. So, no more damage to the Vittles there. And then finally, the last fighter will attack. Same deal. Flips the card over. Spaceborne attack, plus three. So, we're standing at a plus three. Solar League card. Spaceborne defense. Let's see, warp engines be minus three. When well, we're not at the warp engines, we're still at the G2, which that's the, I believe that's shield generator module is what those are considered. Um, all other sections, minus two. So our fighters were at a plus three. We add minus two, which leaves us at a plus one, which that's one hit. So we we'll wouldn't flip the status counter over from status holding to status failing. And those were the attacks from the three fighters. Now we're gonna have attacks from the surface installations that are able to attack. I'm not going to move the camera. I'm just going to leave it on the vittles. But right now on the board, I had seated it with two um, surface installations, which were a missile launcher and a laser. So we'll do the first one. And now this will be a little different. So we're going to do nasty in deck, flip over the resolution card. We actually do, now we look down at, because they're not attacking from space, they're well, our defense will be space, but they're attacking from Hades. So if you look down here under attack, the first one was the laser. There's no modifier at all. So there's a railgun plus two, but this wasn't attacked by a railgun. This was attacked by a laser. So with a zero, we still would flip over. Defense targeted section minus three. So zero plus minus three is negative three. No effect. All right, and now the, let's see, missile. That's the last one. So the last one will be a missile. 
Hades base attack. Oh, see now it is on here. Missile plus three. So plus three. Minus or add space more defense target section minus two. So th three. Add minus two. Leaves a plus one. So that's one hit. Status marker. Because we're already on damage on G2 is now moving over to G3. That's one hit, flips back over to status holding. So they actually caused quite a bit of damage. Um, they knocked us all the way from G1 all the way to G3. All the skill generators are almost destroyed. And that is the first step of the Nastian phase. All right, the next step in the Nastian phase is the preferred direction step. I mentioned these earlier. Um, there is a preferred direction indicator. Whoop, let me get on the camera here. Preferred direction indicator for the Inferno deck and then also for Purgatory. Um, as you can see, there's directions and then there are numbers associated with them. We're good. It's very simple. We just draw a resolution card. You draw a Solar League card for Inferno and then a Nastian card for Purgatory. And then whatever number was in the bottom of that card, we're going to set the preferred destination to that spot. So... Let's go ahead and draw for the Solar League. So, real simple, draw a Solar League card, look down in that corner, you can see it's a two. So, we go ahead and set the preferred direction indicator at two, which is southeast. And now we'll go ahead and do the same thing for the Nastians um, for the Purgatory. They got a three, um, so I went ahead and moved it to southwest. So now any, Nastian units that spawn on the Purgatory deck are going to face Southwest, Southwest Hex, and then any that spawn on Inferno on the top are going to face Northeast. Oh, excuse me, Northwest. All right, the next step here is the reinforcement step. This is where we have our cup filled with the Nastian reinforcements. Go ahead and shake those up, and we're going to draw one. For every guard tower, which remember there's two on each deck and they have a little padlock on there. One, two, one, two. We're going to place the unit there and he's going to face the direction of our preferred indicator. So, draw from the cup. First one, we got a soldier here. Soldier will face um, southeast. I don't know why earlier I think I said northwest. Um, obviously it's southeast. So he faces southeast and on the unit you can see that an arrow that arrow determines the direct, um, where the facing is for that actual unit. So when we put him down here, his arrow is going to face the hex side. And it doesn't do a vertex. It faces the actual hex side because that's the hex he's going to be walking into um, in the next movement step. Draw again. Oh, we actually got a leader for, um, but he, I believe he can only spawn um, on purgatory. So let me double check how that works in the rules. All right, so double check the rules. Um, it's legit draw, but what we do is we place him on the purgatory deck. He stays on the purgatory tech deck, unlike um, other Nassian units, and he counts, but he counts as an infernal draw. We just place him in that um, equivalent guard tower. So since it would have been um, the guard tower up here, we'll place him in the um, guard tower up here, and because it's on purgatory, he will face southwest. So we'll be facing that way right there. Okay. Now we'll go ahead and draw for the rest of Purgatory. They have two more. Um, remember, because the it's, and it's a nasty an officer. I think I keep saying leader. It's an officer is what he is. Technically, that's what the unit type is. So the nasty an officer is already there, but he counted as an inferno draw. So we draw again for Purgatory. First one for Purgatory down here. Um, and we drew a shock. Face that way. And now. He can be stacked with the Nassian Officer, we drew a guard, and he will also face the same way. And that is the reinforcement step. Um, if there was, if one of these surface installations you can see here, if one of them had been an um, elevator, um, there's a flight elevator, and then something else, maybe it's just a regular troop elevator. Anyway, regardless, um, then you would have spawned an extra unit on the Purgatory deck, under that complex, but there were none. They're both offensive, so no need to worry about that. All right, now we do the movement step, 
which each counter, each enemy counter, well, in ours too, I guess, um, has a, whoop. sorry, folks, I'm trying to get it, I'm trying to manage it. Like I said, with the, with the bigger maps and the more table space, it's a little harder to film, but we'll get it done. All right, so you can see he has a five underneath his arrow. That means he can move five hexes. So let me see, he was facing southeast down here and he can move five. So we go ahead and move him five hexes. One, two, three, four, five. All right, and we'll go ahead on over to our other guys over here. Um, this shock unit, he also has a five facing this way. One, two, three, four, five. Our guard, one, two, three, four, five. And then the general is four. One, two, three, four. That nasty option only moves four. All right. Um, what we do is, so they're facing the direction. They move those steps. Um, officers don't leave purgatory. So he would not leave purgatory, the officer. Um, other units, if, so say next turn, when he gets to that complex there, this guard would go to B, um, which you can see B over there. Hopefully you can see it in the uh, video. Yep, you can see it. Okay. Um, he would say it would be one movement to here. He would spend another movement point to appear on B up on the Inferno deck and then continue his movement with the new direction of the preferred direction of that deck. Hopefully that makes sense. So, but right now he's not reached there. So he's back here. All right. Um, let's see. Okay. That is it for movement steps as of the units are on the board now. All right, now we do the officer step. Um, if the officer is on the board, which he is, he would attempt to repair the highest numbered damage surface installation. As of the moment, there are no damage surface installations because us Solar League, we have not had a chance to damage any of them yet. So he's, his power doesn't do anything, um, but it is a pretty powerful um, ability. And it's one of the reasons you wanna to try to stop him as soon as you can. Um, assuming in the right position to do so because um, he will try to flee from your units he doesn't just fight them he actually tries to get away from them all right after the officer step we do the nasty surprise step all right in the nasty surprise step there's a nasty surprise deck um you have i think there are i want to say well let's just count them one two three four five six seven eight okay there are eight yep so there are 12 cards in this deck total in the game um, when you start the game and you set it up, and I didn't go through setup because you can just read that in the rule book. Um, you discard four, you ran, you know, shuffle, discard four, and you use eight. And that, those act like a timer because every turn you're drawing one. And when they run out at the end of that turn, game's over. So what you do is you're going to draw one of these and it is going to be a nasty surprise and it's going to suck, but you're just going to do what you got to do. Let's go ahead and check this card out. So... cards so it has a couple things on here um, it's gonna have some text we're gonna follow it also has letters up top the H and I what those letters mean you look on the board let's go ahead and look down here on the Inferno deck so the red deck you look at H up here and then you look at I which is down here if there are no surface installations on those complexes you go over your surface installation cup with all your red counters randomize them and then you draw so here we got a missile counter, put that on I. And, oh, elevator for H. This is a troop elevator. And then let me check for elevator. It should spawn a unit. Let me double check in the rules. Okay, it's just the flight elevator that spawns a fighter right away. Um, the troop elevator, just when it comes to the reinforcement step, will then spawn an additional nasty in unit. So we set those both out. So those were the letters on the card here. I'll go ahead and read the text here. Now it's a little dark. I have to apologize. I have lights, but the lights are more down here closer to the board so we can actually see the board. All right. So first section, one new nasty in guard unit appears on each guard tower on both maps. Four total, expending seven MPs. Wow. Okay, so let's do that first. So um, it did say guards, so we go ahead and we can dig them out of here. We don't have to draw randomly. It wants guards, which is a specific type of unit. So we'll go ahead and we're going to draw. What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw four. I'm going to place one on each of the guard towers, and then I'm going to move them seven MPs. Okay, I'm going to do that off camera so you guys because you guys already know how that um, ability works of them to spawn and then move. All right, I went ahead and did that. 
Um, and funny enough, both units that spawn in Purgatory, which is a blue deck, um, actually went to Complexes and then went up to the Inferno deck. So the guard down here, you can see, he came up from um, Purgatory. And then the guard over here also came up from Purgatory. Um, one of the guards ended up down here. And then the other one is now engaged with our forces. So I'm going to get to get, show you guys the ground combat step um, right after this. Otherwise, there wasn't actually any ground combat from them, from their perspective. But there is going to be one now. So that's kind of exciting, I guess, right? Not great for us, but that's what they get with the nasty surprise deck. All right. So that was the first section. Don't just do more. Don't worry. Second one. The highest number destroyed railgun not occupied by Solar League friendly forces upgraded to damaged. Okay, so we have no destroyed um, railguns or no destroyed surface insulations, period. So no worries there. Um, final section. If the radar dome is fully functional, one surface missile battery fires once and then fire at the vittles. Fortunately, again, we do not have the radar dome out there at all. Um, so no worries to deal with that. So go ahead and discard that card. And that is the end of the nasty surprise step. All right. Now we enter the last step of the nasty in phase, which is the ground combat step. Like I said before, we had one of their units um, that spawned and moved and is now going to be in engaged. They call that when you, when you move adjacent to the enemy, both for them or for us, um, it's called engaged. So this guard is going to turn to face one of these units and attack them. Very simple to determine. Um, you look at the number up in the top right. This armored infantry has a 77 up here. It has nothing to do with um, combat abilities or anything, by the way. That's just a... Des uh, number designation on the counter able to help for stuff like this so anyway the armored infantry has a 77 this engineer has a 53 that means he's going to face the higher number which means he's going to keep facing this armored infantry here now you're going to go ahead and you are going to resolve it just like you would dun -dun -dun, with our handy resolution decks right so just like we did before we're going to go ahead and draw a nasty and resolution card and then we're going to look at hades based attack and he is a guard. So we look down here. Let's see. He has... Oh, there is no, no guard on there at all. So you want to look for their name. There, I see a shock. I see a soldier. I do not see a guard. So not good for, not good for him. Now, here's where it's going to be different, especially with him having basically a zero. So if you don't get a, a modifier, you just have a zero. And I have a feeling it's going to be bad for that guard. But let's see. So Solar League card. Go ahead and flip it over. Now Hades base defense. Look at the bottom there. Combat unit minus two. There's nothing specific for our armored infantry, but it does say combat unit minus two, which our green units are combat units. So he's a minus two. So you take a zero and you add minus two, goes into negative two. Now remember, I mentioned this before, unlike with space combat and ground combat, hits where it's in the negative number at the end, apply to the attacker. Since it's minus two, that's, or negative two, that's two hits. So this guard takes one hit, he flips over to his um, reduced side, and then another hit eliminates him. So he is eliminated. Could have easily gone the other way. Um, that's just kind of one of the aspects of the game. Um, our units, the green units, are probably a little stronger than most of their units, especially the guards. I think guards and soldiers are the weakest. Um, their shock units are a little tougher. Anyway, that was the ground combat step for the Nasty, and that's the last step for the Nasty in phase. And now we'll go into the Solar League phase where we can do actions with all of our units. All right, this is the Solar League phase. During the Solar League phase, um, each one of our units can conduct an action. Um, full move, move and fire excuse me, full move, full fire, run and gun. Um, the SWAT unit has a special attack they can do. Um, the engineer has a special attack. And then our HQ, our headquarters, also known as our leader unit here, with the number on the top left, um, can do certain things as well. Uh, and then if any of our blue units, which we have um, our Professor Dante down here, which I did not, you know, I don't think I intended to have him here spawn because when you set up, you can put him where you want. I don't think I intended to have him on his own like that. Um, doesn't seem like a good idea, a good, good place for him, but uh, we're just going to leave him there now. It is what it is. I guess uh, his pod landed over here somewhere. I don't know, maybe he ran off on his own. He's a scientist. So 
Anyway, solo league phase, let's dive into it. Um, and we have these markers that after we move our guys, after we do them, um, do their movement or attack or whatever, we're gonna go ahead and throw one of these activated markers on them. Boop. Just to show that they have taken an action. All right, so what I think I'm gonna do first, um, I wanna destroy these solar uh, service installations for sure, because they're just gonna, first of all, they're gonna attack the vittles. And secondly, when I destroy them, that's how I gain access to the interior of the ship and I can get down, get down to purgatory. Um, let's go ahead and do, uh, you know what? Let's do our engineer's attack first. So our engineer has a special attack um, or special ability called engineer sabotage, which he automatically attacks a surface installation with a plus four. So I don't have to flip a, a resolution card over. He automatically just attacks with a plus four. So I'm gonna have this engineer do an engineer sabotage on that laser surface insulation. So he gets a plus four, no need to draw. We do draw for them. Hades base defense. Surface insulation, you can see down there was, or is a minus two. His plus four, you add minus two, leaves it with a plus two, which as we know, plus two means two hits. First hit damages it. Second hit destroys it. We put one of these fancy destroyed counters on there. What do you think of that? Not bad, huh? So now this is destroyed, which means that is now, oh, what letter this is, J, is now a, has access. We can, uh, our units can use that area to go down into the ship and will appear down in J um, on the purgatory deck. Let's go ahead and make sure we put a activated on him so we don't use him twice. Hmm, that was a good one. I like that. Okay, well, let's go ahead and let's see. We'll wait on him. Let's do the up here. I can see their attack as well. Let's go ahead and have our SWAT unit do his attack on the missile. Now the SWAT unit has a special ability where he can use, if you want, you can do his uh, CFP, which is a centrifugal force projector. which is a very scientific and fancy science fiction-y weapon where he can transport, teleport, or whatever anywhere on the red map, on Inferno, next to a unit or wherever, and then assuming he's adjacent, he can use an attack. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna keep, we're gonna stay in that hex. So we're not gonna do the fancy teleport part. We're just gonna stay where we are. But because of that, he gets a plus one. And how this works is with his attack, there's a table that'll determine what happens. So let me grab the table here. Um, and we're gonna draw a card as usual. And we're gonna look at this table down here. And we're gonna look on this table and it's gonna tell us, hey, misfire, malfunction, partial success or success, and then there's any modifiers are listed. So he's not depleted, so we're not gonna subtract one. We're gonna add one though, he's not jumping. So he's not doing the jumping, right? He's just staying still because he's gonna attack that missile battery, um, surface insulation. So we're gonna add one. And just like I've showed you guys before, go ahead and we draw a card. Look at the number on the bottom. Oh man, that sucks. So the number, was a two, is a two, or excuse me, is a one. We have plus one because he's not jumping, which means he get, he ended up with a two, which if you look in two is partial success. Unit displaced remains in destination um, and may attack normally. So bummer, he's gonna do his special power, um, which honestly, just to explain what the special power is, is that um, he when he does his attack, he draws a resolution card, the enemy does not. So they are gonna need to draw a card. I can choose to continue attack if I want to. I do choose to, the SWAT is gonna continue attacking that missile. So we'll do it just like regular combat. Flip more over, Hades base attack. SWAT is listed here as plus three. That's not bad. And flip it over for them. And we're attacking, what are we attacking? Again? A missile, so SI. Hades base defense, SI is minus two. So at plus three, add minus two ends up with just a plus one, so he will be damaged. Not destroyed, but damaged. Then we put an activation marker on our SWAT. All right, well, I'm definitely feeling I wanna take that, take that SI out. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and attack with that armored infantry here. Um, he's gonna attack that missile as well. Normal with him, no special abilities, just the standard flipper over, Hades base attack. Oh, nothing for him. That's bad news. So Hades basically is a taxi. Heavy has a plus four, SWAT, Scout plus three. Nothing for Armored Infantry. That's bad news bears for him. So, flip over the Nastians. Defense, SI is minus two. 
So zero, add minus two, it's negative two. So this armored infantry is gonna take, oh, actually, wait a second. I almost messed up here. It's actually only a minus one because SI minus two, but see in parentheses, that's if it's damaged. Um, so because he is a, it is a damaged unit, not a full strength one, it's only a minus one. So zero, add minus one is negative one. So the armored infantry, instead of being totally destroyed or eliminated, he takes one hit and he's depleted. Whew, sigh of relief for the armored infantry there. Which are units when, at the end of a turn, if they're not adjacent to an enemy, they actually get to um, like regenerate, which is awesome. So speaking of which, because I do want him to regenerate and I still want to destroy that missile, completely destroy it, I have a SWAT left. I'm gonna have this SWAT use his SF, uh, excuse me, CFP to try to transport to that hex and attack the missile. So he's gonna go ahead and do that. So we're gonna draw and he is, he is moving. So he doesn't get a plus one. It's just a straight, whatever we end up. A five, that's success. Awesome. So what that means is this SWAT is able to transport up there. He then does an attack. He gets to flip a card. The SI does not. So SWAT plus four. So it is easily, easily destroyed. Go ahead and throw a destroyed marker on there. And then let's also, by the way, we gotta put our activation tokens out here. We get no cheating around here. For our SWAT is activated and that armored infantry was activated on his attack. All right, cool. So we have one armored infantry down here. We have Dante to do. We have our headquarters. Um, we have our two heavies. Let's do our heavies. And one of the cool things about the heavies is, is that they are the only land unit of ours that can attack fighters in orbit. So we want to help the Vittles. Vittles took a lot of damage at the beginning of the, the round here. So we want to help it. So we want to go ahead and destroy those fighters if we can. So what we're going to do, I'm going to have that first heavy go ahead and attack. I'm just going to have him attack one of the fighters over here. I'm not going to move the camera. You know where the fighters look like, right? A little, little counter. looks like a little fighter on there. First heavy is going to attack, and it is a pretty standard. Let me put it on there so I remember. Um, pretty standard attack. You just go ahead and you flip. Um, Hades base attack. A heavy has a plus three. Perfect. And now we go ahead for the nasty and their re resolution. Spaceborne defense. Fighters minus three. Okay, bummer. So it's a zero, so there are no hits on the fighters. The second heavy is going to also attack a fighter. And they're all the fighters are full strength, so that's why I'm not, I'm not showing you. I'm not worrying about that right now. Um, heavy again. What we got here? Heavy is a plus three. And then the Nastians. Oop. Spaceborne defense, minus four. Okay, well, two things happen. One, nothing happens to the fighters. The heavies wasted their turn. Bummer. Both of them did. Second, although that, you know, plus three, plus a minus four is a negative one. However, that doesn't affect it because of the space combat aspect of them being in space. They do not, you know, shoot back and obliterate our heavy. So no worries there. All right, we only have three units left. Let's go ahead and uh, what we're gonna do with Professor Dante is we're gonna go ahead and move him down. So what we're gonna do is he's gonna move his five movements. So one, two, and then three, he moves to J. Hang on, let me pick up the camera and show you guys. So that was three movement points. He's at J down here, down in the purgatory deck. And now he's gonna move here and next turn. He's not gonna have enough movement points. It takes two to open up. Oops, excuse me. Get the camera actually facing the action here. Um, it's gonna take two movement points to open the door and flip over this circle counter. He only has one movement point left. So he's gonna stop there for his turn. And I'm gonna go ahead and throw an activated marker on him. The armored infantry here. I think he's gonna head down too. So he's gonna use one movement to go over here and the second one to head down to J. Go ahead and I'll show you guys again. I'm getting a little dizzy here, sorry about that. Um, so that was, was it one, two movement? Two movement, and he's sitting on the J complex. Oops, moving things all over the place. All right, and now we're gonna have him, because we already have Dante moving down this way, we're gonna have him move up that way. So we did two, so we'll do three, four, five. Kind of sneak around the back here. I'm gonna go ahead and put a movement marker or activate a marker on him. All right, so the last um, solar league unit we have left is our HQ, Lieutenant Wilson. And Lieutenant Wilson, we're gonna use um, her ability to request. 
which is request reinforcements to be uh, delivered from the Vittles, transported down and land on the surface of Hades on the Inferno deck. Um, if it's, so the Vittles has to be in the system, which it is. Um, the headquarters is not depleted and there are no enemy units adjacent to it. Therefore, there are no negatives or anything like that. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna do the old flip a card over, look at the number. If it's a four or less, we get our we get to take three units off the Vittles and place them within each one within three hexes of the headquarters. So let's flip it over. So open for a four or less. We need those reinforcements. We need those reinforcements. We got a six. That means none. That sucks. Okay. What we would have done is, and that's luck though, maybe. Hey, there's still three fighters in orbit attacking the Vittles. Maybe the shuttle pilot's like, yeah, I'm not going through that. No way. You got to get rid of some of these fighters first. Um, if it had been four or less, what I probably would have done is moved um, two more headquarters, which will allow us to, you know, transport additional units next turn. And then two more headquarters and then probably a, another combat unit of, well, headquarters technically a combat unit, but you know what I mean? One that's more focused on combat, maybe an armored infantry, or I think we have one more SWAT. I maybe would have brought them down. Um, unfortunately, that was that headquarters activation, and that is the end of our um, Solar League phase. On to the Vittles phase. All right, the Vittle phase um, first is very simple. First one is the repair step. So what we do is we flip one of our Solar League cards over, and if we get a three or less on the number, we can re uh, repair, which we get to move the marker up one module. We got a four, which means no repairs are completed. If we hadn't done it, Basically, the status holding marker would have went from G3 up to G2. Unfortunately, it stays at G3 at status holding because the luck is not with us this turn, which is unfortunate, but that's okay. That's what happens. These Some of these games are hard. This one is hard. All right, now we'll do the movement step, which would be we could leave the system. Remember, flip that marker over from in-system to out-system, and then any surface installations, um, we get a parting shot against us. However, um, we are not going to do that because... We need to stay because we need to transport more troops down to the surface. We cannot take off with only seven troops, seven squads down there. Um, they'd get butchered. So, so we're not going to move away. What we'll do then is we'll do our attack step. So the 50 cal is as long as the marker is ahead of them, they can attack. Or if it's on them, it can, they can do a reduced attack. Marker is up here, our status marker, which means we can do a full strength 50 cal attack, which the 50 cal can only target units, enemy units on the surface of Hades on Inferno deck. And then the rogue on one and rogue on two can attack anyone. We're definitely gonna try to attack these fighters to destroy them. So the 50 cal, we're gonna go ahead and it's just like normal. You go ahead and flip, you know, you choose a target and you flip. Um, let me see here. We're gonna choose, hang on, let me move the camera over. So you can see, all right. So at 50 cal, let's see who we want, probably, Let's see, this one down here? Yeah, well, we'll just attack one of these soldiers here, so. Right here, that soldier right there, we're gonna attack him. So we go ahead and do our usual um, flip over resolution card. Which, space born attack, quad, rail guns, and then quad, which we're attacking with the 50 cal quad, so that's a plus three. And they're gonna go ahead and flip their card over. And there's this Haiti base defense on a soldier, minus two. Hope we can see that. Yep. All right, so plus three, add minus or add minus two is only one. So we get one hit on him. So he is flipped over. So he was at least reduced. All right, let's head back over for the fighters. All right, so now we have our two, the two railguns are each gonna get to shoot. Um, railgun one, railgun two. We're gonna attack these fighters because there's still three of them, full strength, not liking that. So railgun number one is gonna attack this fighter on the right here. Go ahead and flip it over. Spaceborne attack. Railgun is a plus three. Hopefully you can see that. I know the light's a little bright where it is right now, I think. Okay, plus three. And then we flip them over. Spaceborne defense. Fighter minus two. Oh, that leaves a plus one. Guess what? That means we actually get to damage it. Yeah. So we flip this fighter over, and now he's damaged. Not bad. I like that. All right. Now I noticed we actually used up the last of our um, green cards, our... Solar League resolution cards. So all you do is you just shuffle the deck um, and go ahead and use them again. All right, now we're ready for the last railgun. We're actually gonna have them shoot at the same damaged fighter because I really want to get rid of that fighter. So, spaceborne attack. Railgun is a plus two. Nasty in defense. Spaceborne defense, minus two. Oh, so 
No damage whatsoever, unfortunately. But we did at least damage one of the fighters. That's a start. All right, on to the recovery phase. All right, so in the recovery phase, um, we look at our units. Any of our solar league units that are not adjacent to a Nastian, we can recover them to full strength. Um, also not next to a non-destroyed um, so surface insulation, which is one of the reasons, remember when I destroyed that one up there, because now we can take this armored infantry that was depleted and flip him over, and now he's full strength again. That was the recovery phase, simple. All right, now we do the end turn phase. You discard the active crisis or calm crash chits if they've been drawn, which they are not drawn. That's something that you would draw out of the bad guys here. You can see a calm crash down there. Um, and then the if the nasty surprise cards are, if there's none remaining, you check for victory. Fortunately, we only had, this was just one turn. We only flipped over one, so there's still seven cards remaining. All right, everyone. That was the first turn of Escape from Hades. Hopefully that gave you guys a really good idea of how the game works. Um, you got to experience kind of a playthrough as we began. You got to see some good luck. Um, we got to destroy both surface installations. We got our guys positioned right here. We already got two guys headed down into the Purgatory deck, starting to explore, looking for Princess Emily. We also had some bad luck. So we damaged one fighter, but there's still, all three are still technically there and able to attack. The Vittles suffered. Um, two modules were destroyed, and we, our headquarters, Lieutenant Wilson, failed us. Good job, Lieutenant Wilson, and was not able to get any reinforcements down this turn. Um, that'll definitely hurt us in the future. Doesn't mean we can't come back from it, but it's going to be something that we would have to fight against. Um, again, hopefully you guys got a good idea how the game works um, and also enjoyed it. I'll be honest, I really like this game. Um, it is one of the better... Solitaire war games I've played recently, or you, know, and you could say it's a sci-fi game. It's not a traditional war game. That's okay. I don't care. I love it. It is a lot of fun. Um, it's campy, kind of a pulp feel. You've seen the artwork. You've seen the cards. But it's, there's a real game here. Um, this isn't just pushing counters around for no reason. It's a very tense game as well with the eight turns. And as you spawn more and more... Um, and you saw, not only did we spawn the four uh, Nastian units to start with the first turn, but then that Nasty Surprise card spawned four more. So we did actually end up with eight, eight enemies on the board in the first turn. And guess what? We're going to start the next turn, and it would be, you know, the reinforcement step, third step of the game. Boom. There's more of them. So um, it shows you how tense and how, how hard it gets that right away they're suddenly everywhere. And they're moving around, and they don't necessarily chase you down. They're more moving according to how the game wants them to move, but I consider that like patrolling. But at the same time, trust me, you're going to run into them. They're going to run into you. You're going to be trying to get somewhere. There's going to be one or two units in a way, and you're going to have to fight. You're going to have to fight some of them. You definitely want to try to avoid some of them, but you're going to end up having to fight some. I like the way the space combat is abstract. I like having the Vittles up in orbit. I like that it's not just the ground combat. Ground combat by itself would be a fun game. I think with the Vittles and managing that and the ships and bringing reinforcements in elevates it from a good game to a great game. So I guess it's kind of a playthrough slash review, some playthrough tutorial slash review. I'll make sure to put that in the title. Um, anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, if you like what you see, let me know. If things you want to change, want me to change, I mean, let me know. Uh, otherwise, I hope you enjoyed it. And I would definitely recommend this game. If you enjoy any of the things I've talked about, please check this game out. It is a really good one. All right, guys, till next time.